Hello, YouTubers. This is Triple Seven Die Hard Forever coming at you with another highly anticipated and highly recommended model as I continue to play catch up. Today, I'll be doing a review on a Gemini Jets vintage KLM Royal Dutch Airlines McDonnell Douglas MD 11 in their retro blue top livery scheme in a 1 200 scale model. I purchased this model from Waffle Collectibles, and their website address is www.wafflecollectibles.com. But first, before I go into details about this particular vintage aircraft model, please allow me to share some information about the history of KLM Royal Dutch Airlines and how they actually came about and still operate strongly after over 100 plus years, please. KLM Royal Dutch Airlines is a Dutch-based airline that was founded on October 7, 1919 as one of the first commercial airline companies and officially commenced operations on May 17, 1920 with the airline's first inaugural flight was from London Corydon Airport to Amsterdam using a leased aircraft transport and travel the Havilland DH-16 commercial biplane. KLM Royal Dutch Airlines is currently the world's oldest operating airline based on foundation date and still continues to operate under its original name when the airline was first formed on October 7, 1919. Then fast forward 100 years later on October 7, 2019. And that's when KLM Royal Dutch Airlines celebrated their centennial anniversary by achieving this prestigious honor of still operating as the world's oldest operating airline that still continues to operate under their original name, becoming the very first airline to reach this prestigious milestone in the history of aviation to do so. The acronym for KLM stands for Koninklijke Luckfart Mosca Beach, which actually means Royal Aviation Society. KLM Royal Dutch Airlines is the national flag carrier airline for the country of the Netherlands, as well as the country's largest operating airline based on fleet size as well as destination served. Whereas the headquarters of KLM Royal Dutch Airlines is located in Amstelveen, which is actually a suburban part of the metropolitan area of Amsterdam, while the airline's main hub and base of operation is located on the grounds of Amsterdam Airport Schiphol which is located approximately 5.6 miles southwest of the city center of Amsterdam that's located in the municipality of Harlem Amir, which is a province of North Holland. As of February 2022, at the time of this video review posting, KLM Royal Dutch Airlines currently operates scheduled passenger and cargo services to approximately 145 destinations worldwide in 70 countries across five inhabited continents from the airline's major hub at Amsterdam Airport Schiphol within fleet of 145 aircraft with no unfulfilled orders pending on this particular aircraft type as this aircraft is no longer operating in KLM's fleet. Also as of February 2022 or at the time of this video review posting, KLM Royal Dutch Airlines is one of 59 airlines in the world of aviation that currently operates as a certified four-star airline carrier according to the international airline review firm Scott Tracks Magazine. All right everyone, Let's take a look at the front of the box here. You see the um, the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, the KLM uh, logo, the uh, KLM Royal Dutch Airlines deal, uh, the computer generated picture of aircraft. You see the 100 years of aviation uh, decal down at the lower part of the box. You see the Deep Hovland DH 16, that was the first plane, and then the uh, current one, just that's the 787 10. Then you see the aircraft type, McDonnell Douglas MD 11 as well as the one 200 scale docast aircraft model information as well as the item number information you see at the front of the box. Now you're looking at the back of the box and what you see is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, some more information about Gemini Jets, the Boeing official license product decal as well as Gemini Jets social media page you see there as well. You can pause and read that information if you like but in the meantime I'm going to keep this moving. All right. All right, now you're looking at the top of the box, and what you see is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, the adult collectible model and warning information, as well as the item number information you see at the top of the box. Now you're looking at the, top, looking at the bottom of the box, sorry about that, the bottom of the box, and all you see is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal. All right, now you're looking at the left side of the box, and what you see is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, the one 200 scale diecast model information, the item number information, the computer generated picture of the aircraft, the 100 years of aviation uh, decal and the KLM logo, and the aircraft type you see on the left side of the box. 
Now you're looking at the right side of the box, it's pretty much the same information on the left side of the box I just showed you a while ago, okay? Now you're looking at the metal model stand that came with the actual model and the black pattern you see up here, folks. The sole purpose of that black pattern, everyone, is not only this pattern protects your model, it also prevents it from being damaged or scratched when you put your aircraft model on this particular model stand. All right, now you're looking at this plastic bag, and what you see in this plastic bag are the actual gear replacement doors for this particular aircraft model, featuring the two little toothpicks for these gear replacement doors. Please stay tuned as I go into detail for the sole purpose of these gear replacement doors for this particular aircraft model. All right, with all that information out of the way about the history of KLM Royal Dutch Airlines and how they actually came about and still operating strongly after 100 plus years, plus all the details are here at the front of the box, as well as the information at the back of the box, plus the actual model stand, plus the gear replacement doors inside this plastic bag, featuring the two little toothpicks for these gear replacement doors. And with no further ado, everyone, here is the actual model out of the packaging. Let's check it out. There it is, everyone. The Gemini Jets Vintage KLM Royal Dutch Airlines McDonnell Douglas MD-11 Jetliner Aircraft in a 1-200 scale model in their retro blue top livery scheme in a 1-200 scale model. All right, allow me to share some information about the KLM Royal Dutch Airlines McDonnell Douglas MD-11 Jetliner Aircraft and how it became a part of their fleet and why it's no longer part of their fleet, okay? KLM Royal Dutch Airlines became the third European operator as well as the 11th airline overall after launch customer Finn Air, American Airlines, Korean Air, Swiss Air, Thai Airways International, Varig, LTU International Airways, Garuda Indonesia, Delta Airlines, and China Airlines respectively that acquired this iconic jetliner aircraft as KLM Royal Dutch Airlines took delivery of their very first McDonnell Douglas MD-11 jetliner aircraft which bared the registration ship number PH-KCA, which had, no, not this one, on December 7, 1993, and took delivery of their last McDonnell Douglas MD-11 jetliner aircraft, which bared the registration ship number PH-KCI on August 21, 1998. KLM Royal Dutch Airlines previously registered and operated as many as 10 of these iconic jetlines in their fleet. And now, as of February 2022, or at the time of this video review posting, this aircraft is no longer operating in KLM's fleet, as the last passenger revenue service flight for this particular aircraft actually took place on October 26, 2014, when it departed Montreal Pierre Elliott Trudeau International Airport in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, and made its final maiden flight back to Amsterdam Airport Schiphol in Amsterdam, as KLM flight KL672, whereas the commemorative farewell flights on this aircraft took place on November 11, 2014, as the commemorative farewell flights operated as KLM Flight 9895, Flight 9897, and Flight 9899, respectively, as KLM Royal Dutch Airlines became the last passenger operator of this particular aircraft type, the McDonnell Douglas MD-11 jetliner aircraft. And after seeing the KLM fleet for 21, and after serving the KLM fleet for 21 years as one of the airline's official jetliners for the Amsterdam-based airline, the KLM Royal Dutch Airlines McDonnell Douglas MD-11 jetliner aircraft officially flew off into the aviation sunset, as this aircraft has since been replaced with the Airbus A330-300s, the Boeing 777-200ERs, as well as the Boeing, Boeing 787-9s, which entered the KLM fleet in 2012, 2003, and 2015, respectively. Now let's talk about the livery scheme on this aircraft. This was the previous livery scheme of KLM Royal Dutch Airlines, which was actually called the Blue Top Livery Scheme, which was actually introduced sometime in 1972, which succeeded the airline's previous White Top Livery Scheme, as KLM Royal Dutch Airlines sported this livery scheme for 30 years up until the Amsterdam-based airline unveiled an updated version of their Blue Top Livery Scheme, which was unveiled in December 2002. All right, everyone, with all that information I weigh about this aircraft, plus the livery scheme you see on this aircraft, with no further ado, let's get down to the nitty gritty and allow me to show you all the details on this aircraft. Mal, show me, let's check out and let us begin. All right, now you're looking at the front of the aircraft here on the port slash left side. We're gonna start at the uh, front nose gear, the front of it. 
here, the nose gear struts, the nose gear door featuring the partial registration chip number on the nose gear door. You see the pewter tubes and the static ports, the radon nose cone, the windshield wipers, as well as the cockpit windows. Please stay tuned as I give you better visual view of those detailed visual details later on in the model review. But underneath the cockpit windows and right by the uh, L1 entrance door is the actual name of the aircraft, Ingrid Berman, which is this right here. And this particular KLM Royal Dutch Airlines McDonnell Douglas MD-11 jetliner aircraft was also christened with the significant name of Igrid Bergman, in which KLM paid an honorary tribute to Igrid Bergman, who was a Swedish legendary actress who was born on August 29, 1915, in Stockholm, Sweden, who was also a three-time Academy Award-winning actress who also starred in a variety of plays, European films, American films, as well as television, movies, and radio, whose career spanned over 50 years as she was also considered one of the most iconic as well as one of the most influ influential screen figures in cinematic history. Unfortunately, legendary actress Ingrid Bergman passed away eventually on August 29, 1982 in London, England at the age of 67 years old as this particular aircraft was officially named in her honor after it was delivered to KLM Royal Dutch Airlines on April 25, 1997. And then now you're looking at the airline's logo and the acronym for KLM, which is displayed right above the windows, right here. The engine columns, there. The winglets, There, as well as the tail fin of the aircraft. There. This is the corporate logo of KLM Royal Dutch Airlines, as the stylized crown logo signifies royal charter status, while the acronym for KLM literally stands for Conan Klika, Luckbark, and Mosca Beach, which actually means Royal Aviation Society. All right, we stay at the front of the aircraft here. On the port side and right by the KLM uh, logo is the uh, KLM, KLM slash Northwest Worldwide Reliability Decal, which is this little decal you see right here. And this airline partnership began in July 1989 when KLM Royal Dutch Airlines acquired a 20% interest stake in the U.S. carrier Northwest Airline, which was a very important step towards the creation of a worldwide network. Then in January 1993, the United States Department of Transporta Transportation granted KLM and Northwest Airlines antitrust immunity, allowing the two airlines to intensify their partnership. And finally, in September 1993, KLM and Royal, KLM Royal Dutch Airlines and Northwest Airlines start, break, start operating all their flights between the United States and Europe as part of a joint venture, even though these two airlines continue to fly under their separate entities. Right. Then you see the uh, McDonnell Douglas uh, decal right here, as well as right there. All right, we have to send the aircraft, and right underneath the wings is the outer bogey gears here, including the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear doors. And then you see see these big massive engines right here, featuring engine cones right there. And these are the German Electric CF6-80C2D1F turbofan type engines that was used on this particular KLM Royal Dutch Airlines McDonnell Douglas MD-11 jetliner aircraft. You also see the KLM logo right there, and then there's the GE logo right there on the engine column there as well. Now we're going to turn this aircraft model around and find out if the turbofan blades do actually spin on this aircraft model. Let's check it out. All right, now you're looking at the front of the engines here on the port slash left side of the aircraft featuring the engine strikes right here and there as well. Now we're going to see if the turbo fan blades on these engines spin. Let's check it out. Oh, yes, they do. Perfect. No uh, inboard land lights on there, though, but you got a, bit, a better visual view of the front visual view of the landing bogey gears here on the side of the aircraft, including the landing gear struts as well as the actual landing gear doors. All right, now you're looking at the engines here on the starboard side, including the engine strike right there, as well as right there as well. And then let's see if the engine blades spin over here as well. Yes, they do, perfect. You you have no inboard landing light, but you got a better front vision view of the landing bogey gears here, including the landing gear struts, as well as the landing gear doors. And then there's the center bogey gear there as well. 
All right, now you're looking at the, uh, the top of the engine, the third engine that sits above the fuselage and on the uh, tail fin right here, and the fan blades do not spin on, on this engine there, unfortunately. But it's more realistic and appealing to say the least. All right, now you look at the front of the aircraft where you got a better visual view of the cockpit windows, the windshield wipers, the radon nose cone, the nose gear doors, the landing gear lights inside of the nose gear doors, the landing gear struts, as well as the front visual view of the front nose landing gears. Now you're looking at the winglet wingtip device on this side of the aircraft. You see the KLM logo on this side here. And then there's the red navigation like you see there as well. All right, we're at the back of the aircraft here on the um, port side where you see right up here, this little door that's the AFT bulk bin door. You see the Flying Dutchman title. And then right above the windows is the actual registration ship number, PH-KCK, which is this registration ship number right there. Registration ship number, PH-KCK. This particular aircraft was the ninth of 10 KLM McDonnell Douglas MD-11s that actually entered the carrier's fleet. And the first test flight on this, and the first test flight day concerning this aircraft remains unknown, but was delivered to KLM Royal Dutch Airlines on April 25, 1997, and flew for 16 years until it was finally withdrawn from the KLM fleet on October 21, 2013. Then was flown to an aircraft storage facility that's located on the grounds of the Southern California Logistics Airport, which is located in Victorville, California on December 2nd, 2013, where this aircraft was eventually scrapped shortly thereafter. All right, we sit at the back of the aircraft here on the port side, and right by the registration ship number is the actual Dutch flag decal, which is this particular flag decal right there. And this flag decal represents the country where KLM Royal Dutch Airlines currently operates from as the national flag carrier airline for the country of the Netherlands. And right uh, next to the Dutch flag decal is the European flag decal, which is this decal right here. And this flag decal represents the ideals of unity, solidarity, and harmony among the peoples of Europe. And then you see the third engine right there, along with the KLM uh, logo on, painted on the white tail fin of the aircraft there as well. All right, you got a better visual view of the landing outer landing bogey gears here. See the landing gear struts and the landing gear doors. And then there's the center outer bogey gear, the center bogey gear there as well, including the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear doors. All right, looking at the back of the aircraft, what you look at is the APU exhaust. Uh, hole here on this particular aircraft. See the engine cones right there as well. As well as the entire aircraft from the rear view angle. Let's check it out. There it is everyone. The vintage KLM Royal Dutch Airlines McDonnell Douglas MD-11 jetliner aircraft from the rear view angle. All right, now you look at the front of the aircraft here on the starboard slash so right side of the aircraft where you see the front nose landing gears right here, the landing gear struts, the landing gear door featuring the partial registration ship number on that landing gear door, see the Peter tools and the static ports, the radon nose cone, the windshield wipers, the cockpit window, the name of the aircraft, Egret Birdman, see the KLM title and the logo, the Northwest and KLM reliability decal, the Royal Dutch Airlines title, as well as the front cargo container loading door you see there as well. All right, now you're looking at the center aircraft and uh, what you're looking at is the um, General Electric CF-80C2D1 F turbofan type engines here on the side of the aircraft featuring the engine cone there. Then you see the KLM logo here on the engine column as well as the General Electric logo. And as well as the side visual view of the landing bogey gears here, it includes the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear doors. All right, now you're looking at the winglet wingtip device on this side of the aircraft featuring the KLM logo you see displayed there, as well as the green navigation light you see displayed there on the edge of the wing there as well. Now you got a better visual view of the landing bogey gears here on the starboard side. 
including the outer gears right here, the landing gear struts, as well as the landing gear door. And then there's the center bogey gear you see there as well, including the landing gear struts, as well as the landing gear doors on that center bogey gear as well. Now you're looking at the uh, back of the aircraft here on the starboard side where you see the rear cargo container loading door, the Flying Dutchman title, the red train ship number, the Dutch flag decal, the European flag decal, as well as the third engine and the airline's logo displayed on the tail fin of the aircraft. Let's check it out. There it is. Awesome. Okay. Before I show you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft model, as well as the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft model in full detail, please allow me to let you check out one feature, which is the rolling gears. I'm about to show you that right now. Let's check it out. Rolls pretty good. So far, so good. You see that front nose gear, you got to be careful with that, though, however. It does tilt, and the front nose gear does swivel. See there? There and there, okay? So with no further ado, Allow me to show you this aircraft from the area of bird's eye view. Let's check it out. All right, now you're looking at this aircraft model from the area of bird's eye view where you see the two-tone blue colors there. We're going to start at the front of the aircraft where you see the radon nose cone, the windshield wipers, the cockpit windows. Then you slide up here, you see the KLM logo and the acronym on both sides. You see the uh, KLM Northwest Reliability decal on both sides there as well. The Wi-Fi box antenna, the anti-collision beacon light, another high frequency antenna, the ADF antennas in 3D, another high frequency antenna, and then that's the third uh, engine right there along with the tail fan of the aircraft, as well as the uh, horizontal stabilizer feature little dots right there, as well as there as well. Those little dots are called illuminator lights, and the sole purpose of those illuminator lights is to light up this tail here when it used to fly during nighttime. Now let's check out the engines and the wings from above. Okay, there's the engine right there with the engine strikes right there. Then you see the wings right there, no wing walkway, but you got the flaps, slats, aileron spoils, what have you. Then you come up this way. You see the uh, inside of the wing, the wing tip device featuring the KLM logo, and then there's the fuel dump valve on the edge of that wing there as well. Now let's check out over here. See the engine right there as well. The engine strikes, no wing walkway on the wing, but you got the flaps, slats, aileron spoils, what have you. Then you got the uh, fuel dump valve as well as the winglet wing tip device features the KLM logo displayed on this side of the aircraft as well. Right now you're looking at the aircraft from the undercarriage belly view. We're going to start at the front. You see the right on the nose cone, uh, the crew escape hatch door, the front nose gear door, and the front nose landing gear, another high frequency antenna, sleek up this way, the Gemini Jets logo, the hole where the stand goes in at, there's the center bogey gear right there, and then there's the anti collision beacon light, another high frequency antenna, a couple more high frequency antenna. And then there's the APU housing doors right there and the horizontal stabilizers underneath. Now let's check out the gears right here. Okay, tilt perfect. See the engines right there with the KLM logo and the GE logo on the, uh, engines, on the engine column on this side here as well. As well as the wings underneath includes the flaps, slats, aileron, spoilers, registration ship number, the lower part of the winglet wing tip device, and the fuel dump valve and the winglet wing tip device you see there as well. Uh, let's check out over here, the gears over here, tilt perfect. See the engines there, as well as the wings underneath, include the flaps, slats, aileron, spoils, what have you, the lower winglet wing tip device, and the fuel dump valve, as well as the winglet wing tip device, the upper part of the wing tip device on this side of the aircraft as well. All right, since I show you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft model, as well as the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft model in full detail, now I'm going to put it on that nice little model stand that I showed you earlier that came with the model. So with no further ado, everyone, here is the model on the stand. Let's check it out.
All right, fine, got this model on the stand. You see it being displayed without no hesitation. As you see it being displayed in the takeoff landing position being viewed from the port side of the aircraft. All right, now you see this model on the stand being displayed in the takeoff landing position being viewed from the front view angle of the aircraft. All right, now you're looking at this model on the stand being displayed in the takeoff landing position being viewed from the starboard side of the aircraft. And finally, you see this model on the stand in the takeoff landing position being viewed from the tail cam angle. I don't know why the model is slanted like that. I guess it's, it is what it is, so I have no control of that. But it's all good, though. All right, before I take this model to stand, I got it at this angle for a reason, and the reason is it's the magnetic gears I show you that came with the model. So I'm going to go ahead and take them off and let you see what I'm talking about. We're going to start the front nose landing gear first. That's magnetic, you see there. The outer bogey gear here on the port side, that's magnetic. The center bogey gear, that's magnetic as well, as well as the outer bogey gear on the starboard side. That's magnetic as well. So since I got all the gears off this aircraft mount, I'm gonna let you see this model at a different angle with the model stand being displayed in in-flight mode slash gears up position without the gears. Let's check it out. All right, now you see this model is being displayed on the stand in flight mode slash gears up position without the gears, as you can see. Now you got one or two options how you want to display your model from this point on. If you want to keep it in this uh, position, the gears up slash in flight mode position, that's fine. You see these gear replacement doors I showed you earlier featuring the two little toothpicks for these gear replacement doors. That's the sole purpose of these gear replacement doors. So you substitute your gears while you display your model like this in flight mode slash gears up position. Or you can do like I suggest is just keep the gears on there in the gear down position. Gears up, gear down, your choice. I choose to leave mine on there because it adds more value to the model. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and put these gears back on this model, take this model to stand, and go ahead and wrap up this model review. All right? All right, let's talk about the seating configuration. The KLM Royal Dutch Airlines McDonnell Douglas MD-11 jetliner aircraft seated 285 passengers in a three-class configurated cabin layout. Here's the breakdown everyone from rows one to six, which will be from here to about right here. You had 24 world, world business class seats, rows seven to 11, which will be from here to about right here. You had 38 comfort economy class seats in rows 12 to 40, which will be from here, about right here, all the way back to the rear of the aircraft. You had additional 223 economy class seats, which brought the total of 285 seats. And finally, from 1993 up into 2014, KLM Royal Dutch Airlines previously employed their McDonnell Douglas MD-11s on routes from the airline's hub in Amsterdam to worldwide destinations such as Aruba, Beirut, Lebanon, Caraco, Delhi, India, Daman, Saudi Arabia, Damascus, Syria, Helsinki, Finland, Los Angeles, California, Lynn, France, Manchester, England, Miami, Florida, Morocco, Montreal, Canada, Newark, New Jersey, St. Martin, San Francisco, California, Tel Aviv, Israel, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, Tripoli, Lebanon, and Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Those were the routes. Well, everyone, this will conclude this model review. I'd like to know if you got this model or you plan on getting this model, if you can find it. Uh, Jason Wings does have one that just came out similar to this one. They got some other additional stuff on it. I passed on this one. This would do, no, this would do just fine for me right here. But if you can snatch this one, I highly recommend it because it's, it's really highly recommended and it's come hard to find as we speak. So with that said, take care, God bless, and above all, stay safe because there's more model content coming. Peace.